Virginia pleaser, spit and polish, Europe's rising star. All this coming up on Horses and Courses. This is the OTB Television Network. One time, boss. Betting Television Network presents Horses and Courses. OTB Thoroughbred News with your host, Jack Wolfeseeder. And now with a look at this week's news in the thoroughbred industry, here's Jack. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. Well, we're approaching the time of year now when uh, the trainers and riders and connections of these uh, big uh, group and grade one stakes horses start uh, getting in their final works in preparation for the upcoming Breeders' Cup, which will be held uh, this year at Churchill Downs, Louisville, Kentucky. And this week we have a gate full of races with horses aiming toward uh, Louisville. Um, very interesting results as we scan this past weekend's racing around the country. We've got some good ones for you. Hope you enjoy it. Let's start right in. Taking a look at the action as it unfolded down in Miami at Caller on Saturday afternoon. Judy's Red Shoes, a handicap for the three-year-old fillies, was the featured race. They're going a mile and a sixteenth, $50,000, the guaranteed purse on the race. Starting things off this week is Phil Saltzman in Calder with the call. Field moves toward the quarter pole now. On the inside, it's Lady Cerise. On the outside, that's Mystery Star with Power Plum on the far outside. Holy Capote looks for room toward the inside, then Miss Medallion. They're at the top of the stretch now. From between horses, Mystery Star leading by a lane. Down the middle of the track, Miss Medallion. Holy Capote finding room toward the inside, now in tight quarters. They come to deep stretch. It's Miss Medallion now in front by a lane. Mystery Star is second. Holy Capote. Capote comes on third. It's Miss, Miss Medallion. She takes the Judy's red shoe. Miss Medallion, nice three-year-old filly here by the sire Honor Grades, and she'd been running in the twenty-five and forty thousand dollar claiming ranks. Trainer Manny Aspura decides to give her a shot in the stake, and bingo! They get the money and then some because eighteen to one. To $44 on Miss Medallion. Javier Castellano on board. Mystery Star was second. And then we got the three to five favorite. Ouch. <laughs> Holy Capoli. Best she can do is finish in the show spot. Miss Medallion, the length victor in 147.4. All right, to Delaware on Saturday afternoon, an older horse handicap race, the Brandywine. Handicap, mile and a furlong, $150,000, the guaranteed purse on the race. Let's take a look as John Curran gives us the call. And they're off in the Brandywine Handicap. That's a perfect start for them all. Toward the outside, Western Echo. Right there is Concerto. Toward the inside, Wakapi Private Song. And victoriously on the far outside, all jockeying for position as they pass the finish line the first time. Concerto and Herbie Castillo takes the lead as they make their way into the turn by about a length. Private Song hugs the rail in second. Wakapi is right there. Western Echo up on the outside. Victoriously next in line. And Tricky Mister is your trailer, but only about five or six lengths off the lead as they make their way into the turn. Opening quarter in a pretty good 23 and 1. And on the front end, Concerto by a length with Private Song still on the rail second. Western Echo up on the outside, edging into third. What Cappy is right there between horses fourth. Another length and a half to Victoriously and two more to Tricky Mister as they make their way down the Delaware back stretch. It's Concerto showing the way. Still leads it by a length and a quarter. Western Echo on the outside of Private Song. What Cappy is still right there in fourth, only two lengths off the lead. A gap of two more to Victoriously and Tricky Mister continues at the back about seven lengths away after a half in 47 and two. 
half mile to go. And it's still Concerto trying to take them wire to wire. Leads it by a length and a quarter. Western Echo now making the move second. Private Song with the rail third. Victoriously up on the outside fourth. With Wakapi still between horses fifth and two more to Tricky Mister. Three eighths to go. And it's still Concerto showing away. They're bunching up. Leads it by a length. Western Echoes between horses. Victoriously, Tricky Mister is now making a run, sustaining a rally on the far outside. Here comes Tricky Mister from last. The six and 11 and fours, they head for home in the Battle of the Brandywine. Concerto on the inside still leads it by half a length. Tricky Mister with Juan Yamana racing second. Victoriously is right there between horses third for long to go. Castillo's all out on Concerto. He's responding, leads it by three parts of a length. Tricky Mister's trying, but Concerto will win it wire to wire by a length and a half. Tricky Mister, a good second and victoriously third. Well, Bill Mata sends Steinbrenner's concerto down to Delaware. The fans make him three to five. He doesn't disappoint. Goes to the front and they just can't catch up with this guy. They tried hard. They were coming at him in the stretch, but uh, Herbie Castile rode him very nicely. Had enough left to get the length and a half score. Tricky mister was second, as you see there, and victoriously got the show nod. Concerto uh, gets it was second. We should remind you to awesome again here in the Saratoga Cup uh, over the summer. Goes the mile and a furlong, one forty nine and four. All right, last Friday evening at the Meadowlands, we had three year old fillies on the grass in the Boiling Springs uh, handicap Breeders' Cup handicap. It's a mile and a sixteenth in distance. The purse on the Boiling Springs is $200,000 added money. Ken Warrington's in the booth this past Friday. Here's his call of the Boiling Springs. We're off to the Boiling Springs Breeders' Cup Handicap. From the outside comes Mysterious Mole for the early lead. And between horses, who did it and run? Who did it and run? Mysterious Mole on the outside. And towards the inside, House Virgin got away well. Is now settling in third. Positive Energy is fourth. Thunder Kitten, the favorite between horses, fifth. My Country Girl is caught wide on the outside, sixth. Grandma Pat between horses, seventh. Pushed wide there was Sopran Londa in the eighth spot followed by Caveat Competitor on the outside, and then it's Malt near the back of the pack, next to last, trailing is some of these days, 12th and last, 22 and three for the first quarter, down the back stretch. And it's Who Did It and Run? Felix Ortiz by two lengths. Mysterious Ball is second by three. Thunder Kitten is third. On the outside, My Country Girl into fourth. House Virgin is racing fifth. Positive Energy is sixth. It's Nascar's Delight up on the outside, seventh. Slipping through on the inside is Malt, racing eighth. Trapped between horses is Caveat Competitor. And then it's Sopran Londa next to last and far back is some of these days. 46 and one for the half. Opening quarter was 22 and three. And it's still who did it and run. But pouncing on that one, mysterious ball now. Jose Espinoza, positive energy is right there between horses. And uh, kicking in his Thunder Kitten now. She angles clear for the drive. Three quarters, one, ten, and one. They're in the stretch now. Mysterious Ball. It's Mysterious Ball on the outside doing battle as they come down to the wire. Digging in on the inside. Who did it run? Who did it run? Mysterious Ball. Too close to call. Mysterious Mile, a nose victory. Julio Espinosa up for Del Caro in a long, hard drive. Sent off at nine to one, drink twenty-one dollars and sixty cents on Mysterious Mall as she runs down the two to one uh, first and second choices. Who did it and run and Thunder Kitten? Thunder Kitten was the actual off-time favorite. Uh, but she can do is get third. Who did it and run uh, gets back on the board after trying some much uh, tougher company back for a spot where she can do some good. But it is Mysterious Mal coming in from Hawthorne for the win in a minute, 40 seconds flat. Philadelphia Park, Saturday afternoon, the always important cotillion handicap for the Phillies and Mares at a mile and the 16th. Purse on the cotillion, $150,000 in guaranteed purse monies. These are three-year-old Phillies. Let's take a look. Here's Keith Jones in Ben Salem describing the action. And they're off. 
On the inside, Supercharger, Sister Act, and Victorica all break together. And Sister Act will take the lead now into the first turn with Supercharger second. Victorica third as they enter the first turn. Salty Lady is on the inside. She's fourth as Lou Ravi. Now moves up to claim the fifth position. It's a break of three back to Tappy Davenport, farther back to stretch running Let and 2-2 two, two Divine is the early trailer that went the opening quarter in a good 23 seconds flat. On to the back stretch now, Supercharger on the inside of Super Act. Sister Act on the outside, it's Victorica. Lou Ravi is now just off the lead. She's in the clear on the outside fourth. It's a length and a half back to Salty Lady. She's in behind the front runners in fifth. It's about three back to Tappy Davenport. Another length and a half to Let. She has a half mile to make up about six lengths. And then it's two and a half to two, two divide. They went the half in 46 and four. They now make their way onto the far turn. Lou Ravi has hung out there four wide. Supercharger is down in at the rail. Sister Act is between horses along with Victorica. Those four together with five sixteenths to go. Let draws within striking range. Salty Lady makes no headway. They come to the top of the stretch and Lou Ravi with a powerful run to take command. Lou Ravi going very well as they come off the turn. She cuts the corner and quickly opens up by two. Sister Act is trying to stay with her. Let is on the outside. She's under the whip in third. Down to the 16th hole, it's Lou Ravi, but Sister Act is coming to her with a late challenge. Lou Ravi, Sister Act coming on. Sister Act, Lou Ravi, they're coming down to the line together, and that one is too tight to call. Oh, what a finish we have here. Lou Ravi and Sister Act separated on the wire by nostrils. Give it to Lou Ravi. Willie Martinez up. This daughter of AP Indy was second in the Alabama, second in the Delaware Oaks. That's pretty good company right there. And now she gets the victory in the cotillion. Sister Act just losing the bob there in a tremendous effort. Let is your show finisher. Lou Ravi, Sister Act, they put on quite a show for the fans at Philly on Saturday. Give them the mile on the 16th and one, 43 and two. All right, staying in Pennsylvania, we're going over to the western part of the state to Penn National, where Saturday evening they had the Mario Benito Memorial Handicap run for the older horses. $50,000, the guaranteed pot on the race. They're sprinting three quarters of a mile. Let's take a look at him. Here's John Bogar with the call. It's Buffalo Dan on top, nearly two, moving to the quarter pole. Wise Dusty is second outside, Cathy Nimble is next. Four lengths then to touch of St. Mary's as they turn for home. Buffalo Dan extends the lead. He's there now by three and a half. Wise Dusty chases second. Catby Nimble is third. Touch of St. Mary's fourth. But Buffalo Dan is pouring it on. And Buffalo Dan is your 98 match champion. Buffalo Dan and Stu Elliott bearing foes in the Benito handicap. Well, how good is this seven-year-old Buffalo Dan? What's this, his third in a row? Look at him. He's under wraps. Stuart Elliott's not even letting him run. And he blows the doors off of this field by seven lengths. The fans pegged him right, made him one to two. Second and third goes to Wise, Dusty, and Cat Me Nimble. They could have gone around again and again and again. This guy has never been as good as he is right now. Look at that. Eight and four for the three quarters, equaling the track record at Penn National. Saturday night, old-timer Buffalo Dan. All right, let's go to Colonial Downs on Saturday afternoon. Three good races for you. We'll start you off with a nice filly and mare turf for the all-along stakes. It's 100 grand. They're going a mile and a furlong on the Virginia lawn. Let's take a look at them. Here's the call with Dave Rodman in Virginia. And they're off. Clean break of the all along stakes. And on the outside, Lordy Lordy goes directly to the front. Be is going to show some early speed as well. And bursting forth, going to be taken back off that lead, followed by Hoochie Coochie, who's racing on the rail. The Unforgiven tugging pretty hard on the outside. Rumpy Pumpy trying to rate about five lengths off that lead. Second last, we have Tough Broad and Overcharger in the back of the pack onto the first turn. Leading the way, Lordy Lordy got it a half length from Be in the second spot. Down inside is bursting forth and the Unforgiven right alongside. 
The Unforgiven now takes the third spot. Rumpy Pumpy's about five lengths from that leader. Hoochie Coochie racing inside. Second to last is Tough Broad and Overcharger is last now. Some 11 lengths off that lead. The pace very slow up here. Lordy Lordy stealing it out here. Lordy Lordy leads it by a length. Be Elusive is second. The Unforgiven is next and bursting fourth. Rumpy Pumpy about four and a half lengths off that lead racing in fifth position. Hoochie Coochie down inside followed by Tough Broad and Overcharger. Not much change as the field charges to so the far turn of the turf course. Just about a half mile to go in the race. It's Lordy Lordy out there. Three quarters of a length still going easily. Lordy Lordy sneaks around that far turn from Be Elusive by three quarters of a length. The Unforgiven bursting fourth is in fourth. And we go back to Rumpy Pumpy who's in fifth. Tough Broad on the outside. Hoochie Coochie and Overcharger is last of them all. They swing around the turn, head on to the top of the stretch. Lordy, Lordy, be elusive. The Unforgiven on the outside, bursting forth on the white cap. Tough Broad on the outside and Rumpy Pumpy in between. Then back to Hoochie Coochie, Overcharger. It's Lordy, Lordy and be elusive. The Unforgiven, Tough Broad out in the center of the racetrack, bursting forth with those burst of energy on the inside. Here comes bursting forth. Lordy, Lordy, they're head to head. The Unforgiven on the outside. This is wide open. Bursting forth on the outside. The Unforgiven and it's bursting forth. Fourth Prado saved the ground and got the win in the all along. Bursting fourth, three parts of a length to the good here. Edgar Prado up for trainer Gray Motion, owned by Hall of Famer Sam Huff. He's got a nice win here. Bursting fourth, uh, sent off at five to two, as we mentioned, always close up. A daughter of Al Wazmi gets the victory in the all along stakes. The Unforgiven and Be Elusive will be the runners up uh, bursting forth goes the mile and a furlong at colonial on saturday in a minute 48 seconds on the button all right next up we've got three-year-olds sprinting in the montpelier stakes six furlong seventy five thousand dollars is the guaranteed purse again is dave rodman describing the action Less than a half mile to go. Southern Bostonian, Green Spring Willie. They're going at it. Power by far, tracking them three wide with the pace. It's only money and Claiborne's gold in the back of the pack. Three in the front, two in the back. The field of five turns for home. About a quarter of a mile to go. In between Southern Bostonian, power by far. Green Spring Willie down to the rail. Clebens Gold ready to pounce on and swings to the outside. And it's only money. Here comes Clebens Gold out in the center of the racetrack, rolling them down. Just in front is power by far. Clebens Gold. And now between, it's only money. It's only money in power by far. And Clebens Gold coming past the furlong marker. Power by far. Clebens Gold trying hard on the outside. It's only money, but it's power by far. He's got the power. And he takes the Montpelier Stakes. Power by far, a power of mind, three-year-old. We've seen this guy uh, before, Robbie Alvarado in the Irons, and he's just too good. They made him four to five. Tony Carrenti uh, saddling power uh, by far and gets his second in a row. It's only money and Clavin's gold. They'll be the place and show runners in the race. Power by far goes his six furlongs in the Montpelier in 109 and three. All right, and the actual main attraction on Saturday at uh, Colonial was the first running of the Virginia Derby, a mile and a quarter for the three-year-olds. $250,000 is the guaranteed purse on the Virginia Derby. Let's take a look at him again. Here's Dave Rodman describing the race for us. And they're off of the Virginia Derby. From between horses, long shot True Silver sets off for the lead. Patriot Love on the outside. Down to the inside is La Reine's terms. On the far outside is Black Blade is also moving forward. Also, Hardy's Halo is in the early mix as well. We've got five of them across the track. Hardy's Halo caught out there for a wide. Black Blade now settles in on the extreme outside. Favorite crowd pleaser settles down in mid-pack, followed by Distant Mirage. Then we go back to Monet Air and Escort, and Red Reef is last of them all into the turn. 
Patriot Love is leading the way. Patriot Love just edging along here, half length, not in much hurry at all. Leads it a half length from Hardy's Halo in the second spot. On the inside, True Silver is next. The far outside is Black Blade is three wide around that turn. In between horses, Crowd Pleaser trying to raid along just two and a half lengths in the front and not really going fast up front at all. Lorraine's Terms is racing down inside there. In between horses is Distant Mirage, just four lengths in the front. Monet is next, and Red Reef and Aaron Escort dropped out to the back of the pack. They've slowed the pace up quite a bit up here. Three of them right across the track, and on the inside, still carving out the slow fractions, we have Patriot Love by ahead. Hardy's Halo right alongside in the second spot. Black Blade is third. Crowd Pleaser now clear and full of run on the outside. Crowd Pleaser moves up to join those leaders, followed by Lorraine's terms. It's time for Distant Mirage to make a move. Within three lengths of the lead, they're starting to quicken on now. Around the turn they go. Here comes Crowd Pleaser with a four wide bid out to the front. Hardy's Halo sticking with him. Black Blades in between horses. Now Patriot Love begins to feel some pressure is dropping back. Distant Mirage out to the center of the course is let loose and they're homeward bound in the Virginia Derby. Crowd Pleaser on top by two lengths. Distant Mirage racing in second. Hardy's Halo next in third in between horses. Lorraine's terms, but through the final furlong, it's Crowd Pleaser by two and a half from Distant Mirage. Finishing well as Aaron Escort from the back of the pack, but the inaugural Virginia Derby is a real Crowd Pleaser. Well, congratulations to Jonathan Shepard, George Strawbridge's Augustan Stable, as crowd pleaser, as Dave said, indeed does please all of those folks down in Virginia at the track on Saturday with a nice uh, three-length romp. Sent off at uh, seven to five. Uh, nice, easy fractions uh, going three quarters and 13. And gets it for crowd pleaser. A offspring of AP India, so another AP Indy runner hitting the or winning a stake on the program this week. And we should note that Crowd Pleaser was in Saratoga right up until uh, last Thursday uh, before the race. Had a couple of works up here. I actually been training right along since uh, he won uh, the, during the meet itself, uh, an allowance race, a stakes race, and now was van down to Virginia after completing his training chores this past Thursday and gets the victory. So the Oklahoma track sends out another stakes winner, Jean-Luc Samin in the Irons. Distant Mirage, Aaron Escort, they're the second and third runners in the race. Crowd pleaser going the Virginia Derby's mile and a quarter, two minutes and one-fifth seconds. All right, we're going to take our first pause here. When we come out the break, we've got action this week from Turfway Park. Uh, we're out to Santa Anita, the Oak Tree meeting in process. We've got a couple of nice races from Belmont, some state bred races included. And then uh, we'll be over in Paris for a look at the big Arc de Triomphe that was run this past Sunday. Much, much more to come. Don't go away. Be right back after these messages. At the eighth pole. New York bred Raffi's Majesty ran in this year's Grade 1 Travers against the world's best three year olds. Raffi's Majesty is fourth. The New York Reds can run with anything. As they come to the line, Raffi's Majesty closing with the rush. Photo finish. This New York bred lost by inches to Coronado's Quest and Victory Gallop. Three noses on the line. Then there's Lucky Roberto. In this year's Grade 1 Hopeful, he beat some of the very best two year olds. Lucky Roberto on the outside. And I really like the horse a lot, and by being a New York bred, it made me like him a little bit more. Lucky Roberto forges past to win the hopeful. Lucky Roberto earned $120,000. Plus, as a registered New York bred, look at the award bonuses for his owner, breeder, and stallion owner. Well, when I am at the Keeneland sales or whatever sale, um, I know what the money you can make and the money that can be earned here with these New York breds. We go through a catalog, we make a list of all the horses we like to look at, and we do circle the New York breds because I think there is an advantage to buy them. All right, let's take a look at Turfway Park Steak on Saturday afternoon. Not a very pleasant day in the greater Cincinnati area, as you will see. It was the Marfa handicap. They're going six and a half furlongs. The older horses are uh, 75,000 is the guaranteed purse on the race. Quite dismal conditions. Uh, nonetheless, Mike Pataglia has got the call for us. 22 and 2 for the opening quarter. Van Patten and Grim Reaper are right together. Then on the outside, Proven Cure with Partners Hero and Receiver. Length further back up on the outside to Crest of Dawn. The half 44 and 4. 
into the stretch. Grim Reaper and Van Patten. Those two together. Now Van Patten puts the head in front. Grim Reaper on the inside second. Partners, Hero is gaining ground on the outside. It's Grim Reaper on the outside. Here comes Partners, Hero, take note of me. On the inside, Grim Reaper, Partners, Hero on the outside. He gets up to win it ahead. Well, you gotta give Partners, Hero the credit here. This is a nice win uh, coming from off the pace on that track. Uh, Calvin Burrell up for D. Wayne, uh, sent off at three to one, and they get the neck victory over Grim Reaper, who, and take note of me, finishing in the show spot. Partners Hero loving the going and didn't mind all the stuff coming back, hitting them was very game. Goes to six and a half and one sixteen and two. All right, up to Woodbine on Sunday afternoon. Nice turf race from Canada. Phillies and mares in the Canadian handicap at a mile and a sixteenth on the Woodbine lawn. $100,000 in added purse monies. Here we go with Dan Loisel in Toronto describing the race for us. They're off in the Canadian stakes. Griselda now one emotion, jumps out to an early lead. Genuine Emerald is uh, to the outside. Coming on to the inside is a try my tie and Heliotrope. About to cross over the tunnel. Heliotrope on the inside. Try my tie is on the outside. Ascot Yale is a close third. One emotion is back and forth now. And Genuine Emerald is fifth. No foul play is in sixth position. Santa Emilia is seventh and Griselda is eighth. Karakia is ninth. A firm tour is a tenth. And Sky Trial is eleventh. It is Heliotrope with a short lead to Ascot Yale. Try My Tie is third. One emotion to the outside of Try My Tie, just a length and three quarters off the lead. Then we have Genuine Emerald. No foul play. Lacks some running room into the turn. Santa Amelia's back four lengths off the lead. Then Griselda, firm to tour. They're midway on the turn, a half mile and 46 and three fifths. It is Heliotrope, but here comes One Emotion, Try My Tie. Genuine Emerald is wide as Santa Amelia is on the extreme outside, moves within three lengths of the lead. Griselda's in there with a shot. It's wide open as they turn for home. One Emotion, Heliotrope, Genuine Emerald. Here comes the Santa Amelia. Griselda's on the far outside as they come to the eighth ball. On the inside of his long shot, Heliotrope. Sky Trial from out of the clouds is kicking in on the far outside. Here comes Sky Trial. Heliotrope is to the inside. Griselda's in between horses. Sky Trial, short lead. Griselda, here is the line. Sky Trial and Griselda in a photo to win in the Canadian Stakes. Sky trial wouldn't be denied. She just kept coming down the stretch and gets the win by a neck and 25 to one shot. Ching, $52.50 on this Daughter of Sky Classic, owned by Samson Farm, trained by Mark Frostred, gets the victory. Robert Landry in the irons aboard Sky Trial. Griselda was second, Heliotrope. Finished in the show spot. Sky Trial, mile on a 16th Sunday up in Toronto, 1:42 and 2. All right, out to Bay Meadows Saturday afternoon. Good sprint here. The California Sprint Championship, six furlong the distance. These are state breads, 125,000. Added money's on the line. Tony Kao's our announcer in San Mateo. Here he is with the call of the Cal Sprint Champion. And there they go. Slow start for Big Jag. Not for Scurry Home. He shows plenty of speed along with Red. There goes Avenue of Gold to join the leading two. And Avenue of Gold is on level terms in the early stages. Devoted Pirate outside of Slew's Royal Sun. We've got a crimson look. Big Jag Crossville trails. Through the opening quarter, Avenue of Gold with her head in front, scurry home to the outside. Slew's Royal Sun closest to the rail. Crimson Look is making up ground rapidly, and there goes Big Jag to the far outside. Also, there is Devoted Pirate, and the trailer is Crossville. And Red's also in that group in the behind the leading four. 
as they're near the quarter pole. Avenue of Gold Crimson look to the outside as Big Jack Scurry home checks back. He's in fourth, turning into the stretch in the California Sprint Championship. Big Jack closest to the grandstand. Crimson look between runners. Avenue of Gold at the rail. Final furlong. Big Jack has his head in front. Big Jag outside of Crimson Look, who's running a good one at Big Odds. Avenue of Gold back to third. Big Jag front and center. Big Jag, he'll win the California Sprint Championship over Crimson Look. Big Jag, Jose Valdivia Jr. Up a tough break coming out of the gate, but recovered nicely and runs on to a length and a quarter score at four to one odds. Pretty good. Tim Pinfield, the trainer, of Big Jag uh, and uh, Valdivia as this guy enjoy a steady gain throughout the race and gets up and actually going away at the end there. He's a uh, five-year-old son of Clevin. Don't see too many of those around. Crimson Look, Avenue of Gold, uh, uh, finished second and third. Avenue of Gold, a nine to five fave. Best he can do is get third. Big Jag, six furlongs, 109 and three. All right, in Southern California, this past Wednesday of last week, the Oak Tree meeting at Santa Anita got underway. We wanted to show you the Autumn Days handicap. Good sprint here with the Phillies and Mares are at six and a half panels on the turf course. Purse is $100,000 in guaranteed money. Trevor's got the call of the Autumn Days, and here he is. Gates closed, they're all in. Heel for the autumn day sent on their way. Tomorrow's sunshine was slow. Advancing star quickly to the early lead. Imraz in the white sleeves coming through at the rail and Sweet Mazarine on the outside as third. Here's Dance Parade racing in fourth. Three lengths off those leaders. Been followed by Socket Set. Tomorrow's sunshine's come through to race in six. Green Jewel is the gray second last. Nine off the leaders and then it's five back to Curitiba. Less than a half mile to go, and Imroz goes clear now. Imroz is the leader, Sweet Mazarine racing in second. Advancing Star has dropped back into third, two lengths off the leader. Then we come back, another three lengths to Dance Parade, who's racing fourth. Socket set inside of that. Tomorrow's Sunshine and Green Jewel, a good 11 lengths off the leaders, and six back to Curitiba. Coming to the top of the lane, Sweet Nazarene, the leader, Advancing Star, now hooked to the outside and coming with her run, Imroz on the inside of that, Dance Parade coming, running on in fourth, they run past the eighth pole, Advancing Star now hitting the front, Dance Parade gonna come chase her home, Advancing Star and Dance Parade, the two favourites, Dance Parade going slightly the better of the two, Advancing Stars hanging tough though, Dance Parade, Advancing Star, they hit the wire, Dance Parade. Dance Parade gets the head victory of this Gone West Philly trained by Neil Drysdale. Puts in a steady gain to get up. She's now seven wins out of 11 lifetime starts. Very, very nice uh, Philly is Dance Parade. Advancing star out of Mandela's barn. How many times do we see her get caught? Here he is getting caught again, finishing in the second spot. Green Jewel is the show finisher. Dance Parade goes the six and a half. Opening day of the Oak Tree Meet in one thirteen and four. All right, let's move on to Saturday at Santa Anita. And we've got the Henry P. Russell Handicap Boy, another grass race, mile and a furlong, $75,000, the guaranteed purse. We've got older horses going postward. And again, we've got Trevor with the call. Coming to the top of the lane, Jack Sharp. Now Crystal Hearted puts his head in front. Brave act on the outside. Dancing place is right there too. Rate cut has six lengths to make up. Turning for home now and it's Brave act on the grandstand side. Crystal Hearted at the rail. Cravers running a good one and dancing place. Rate cut coming too late and Brave act now hits the front and Brave act starts to pull clear and Chris McCarran going to mark up another milestone. More stakes wins than any the rider at Oak Tree. Well, there's the favorite, Brave Act, getting a length and three-quarter score in the Henry Russell on Saturday. He was just galloping along, uh, owned by uh, the Craig family, Sid and Jenny Craig, trained by Ron McAnally. This guy is really off the board. 14 lifetime starts now, six wins, five seconds, 
and a third, very consistent runner, is Brave Act, a son of Persian bold. Chris, in the irons and a milestone in Chris's career by winning this race aboard Brave Act, he passes Shoemaker and now becomes the lifetime leading stakes winning rider at the Oak Tree meeting. This is his 63rd stakes win at Oak Tree. Crystal Hearted and Dancing Place uh, Palace were second and third. Brave Act, mile and a furlong, 147 and two. Sunday afternoon, the Oak Tree Turf Championship was running. We got a ding-donger here for you. Older horses are going a mile and a quarter. $300,000 is the guaranteed purse on the race. What a fabulous stretch run. Let's take a look at it. Here's Trevor's call of the Oak Tree Turf Championship. The hill for the Oak Tree Turf Championship sent on the way. Legend of Russia dwelt and was off a little slow. Military immediately bouncing off to the lead and military goes clear early. Amarique in the white cap is racing in second and Bonapartiste the grey settles down in third. Then we come back to River Bay. Military going very wide into the turn. He only carried Amarique out with him. And the early trailer is Legend of Russia. Passes stands first time round and military dropping back down onto the rail. Now he's in front by a length. Amarique tracking him second and then there's a gap at two and a half to Bonapartiste in the third spot. River Bay is giving them a good line length start and then another two to Legend of Russia. Past the stands first time round and military got those ears cocked out here. He's just loping along, not in any hurry at all as military's in front by a length. Amarique tracking him in second. Bonapartiste in the perfect spot. He's right there third as Bonapartiste got his eye on military on the lead. Then there's a gap of four and a half back to River Bay and Legend of Russia quite content to trail. He gives the leader 12 lang start. Down the back stretch they go and military starting to sneak away now. Military's opened up four lengths without using any excess energy but now Bonaparte sees he's getting away and Bonaparte now coming after military. Amarique on the inside is third is a gap of six lengths back to River Bay and Legend of Russia is still last. They have less than a half mile to go in the Oak Tree Turf Championship and military's enjoyed this easy lead throughout. He's clear by three. Bonaparte second then Amarique. Now River Bay comes to take them on and River Bay in the white cap closing in in third. Legend of Russia starting to roll from last. Heads a turn for home and military's the leader just over a length. Bonapartiste and River Bay on the outside. The three favourites to dispute it. Military's digging deep and finding more. Bonapartiste, River Bay not quite quickening enough. And it's Bonapartiste and military nose and nose to the wire. Chris McCarran and Bonapartiste, military and Cory Nakatani. They hit the wire so close up. Well, in virtual lockstep to the length of the stretch, military and Bonaparte put on quite a show. Nakatani on military, Chris on Bonaparte. Uh, these two almost inseparable. I would have called it a dead eat. It took the placing judges and stewards about 15, 20 minutes to finally separate them and give us a winner here. And they came up with military who gets it by an inch for trainer Wally Delase. Hey, the last time uh, these guys ran against it was in the Del Mar Handicap, and the three of them, Military, Bonapartiste, River Bay, they all were one, two, three, but Military was third. Bonapartiste, you recall, won the Handicap, and River Bay was second. So what are the folks out at Santa Anita do? They make River Bay the four to five favorite. Go oh, figure. Military went off at three to one, and gets the victory in a fantastic Oak Tree Turf Championship in the time of two minutes, two seconds flat. Oh, wow, what a race. All right, let's take our second break here. When we come out of the break, we've got action from Belmont from Saturday and Sunday, including a couple of state bred races. And then we'll journey across the Atlantic to Paris to like, take a look at the action at Longchamp over the weekend. Don't go away. Much more to come. Be right back after these messages. A day in Saratoga is not complete without a visit to the National Museum of Racing and Hall of Fame on Union Avenue in Saratoga Spring. Get an insight into the tradition of great thoroughbred racing from the beginning of the Saratoga track in the 1800s to the present day. It's an experience you'll treasure forever. 
National Museum of Racing and Hall of Fame on Union Avenue in Saratoga Springs open year-round. For more information, call 1-800-562-5394. Capital OTV continues its fall out-of-state special events this weekend. On Sunday, October the 11th, it's the Grade 3 $250,000 Hawthorne Derby from Hawthorne. It's a turf event at a mile and an eighth for three-year-olds. The race call with track announcer Kevin Gomer will be live on WVKZ Radio and televised live to all Capital OTV Salmacast branch locations and the television network. Don't miss the Hawthorne Derby Sunday, October 11th. The approximate post time is 6 p.m. All right, the eighth race on Saturday down at Belmont was state breads going a flat mile on the grass in the Ashley T. Cole, $50,000 in added purse monies. Uh, let's take a look at him roll. Here's Tom with the call of the Cole. The opening quarter in a sparkling 22 and three. Bellingham, a half length, Amber ready to run, continues to run with Bellingham, and they continue to move at a good clip as they move into the far turn. Jifty third, Tomlin's back fourth, draw shot at the fence in fifth. Old Chanicky taking the outside route up into sixth position, and then it's Plato's Love and Abenaki. It's a tight pack, very wide open as they hit the midway point on the turn. Amma ready to run continues to slug it out here with Bellingham. Bellingham, Amma ready to run continue to duel. Draw shot is at a good ground saving trip and draw shot looms in behind the leaders as they turn for home. Tomlin's flag, old Shanaki on the outside. Jifty's in traffic, Abenaki nowhere to go. Plato's love switched to the far outside. Bellingham in front, draw shot now finds a seam. Here comes draw shot to take on Bellingham. Plato's love charging down the center of the course. Abenaki close Closing like a wild horse coming down to the line. It's draw shot, Abenaki, draw shot wins. Ab draw shot, Angel Penes sends this five-year-old son of Cormoran out for his ninth career win. Won the Kingston back in May and had to, to wait a little while to get this next victory. Jerry was up for the next score. Abernaki was second in a good effort and Bellingham uh, ran very nicely as well and just uh, had the front end there and just couldn't hold off the first two finishes in the late stretch, but nonetheless, a very nice effort. Draw shot gets the win in the coal in a minute 33 and two. The ninth and featured attraction Saturday, this year's running of the grade one flower bowl invitational handicap for our disc staffers, $400,000 the guaranteed purse. They're going a mile and a quarter. Let's take a look at them. Here's Tom with the call of this year's Flower Bowl. And they're off. Bia Valentine sent out to establish the lead quickly. Auntie Mame was away in good order, and she'll be second as they make that run into the first turn. Bailey guides Yokama to the rail at once. And Maxime is second last, and the European filly, Barr, is the trailer bars about six lengths from front running Bia Valentine, who's moving at a solid early pace. Bia Valentine scampering clear from the field. She's got a five length lead after the opening quarter mile that went in a lively 23 and three. Bia Valentine on top. Now Jorge Chavez trying to harness her speed with a lengthy lead established. Anti Mame, a controlled second. You'll come a third. And Maxine on the outside is. Well in hand, running fourth, about seven lengths from front running Bia Valentine. Barr continues to trail the field. Moving down the back stretch, the opening half mile in 47 and four fifth seconds. The pace is an honest one here, set by Bia Valentine. She's still clear by four and a half lengths. Annie Mame is running along in second. John Velasquez just steals a peek back to find Yokama third at the rail. And Maxine only two and a half lengths behind Annie Mame. Barr continues to trail the field. Four furlongs left in the flower bowl. Bia Valentine and the field is catching up to her. The lead's down to a length and a half. Annie Mame is second and on the move now. Yokama third. Maxine is called on for run. She's fourth with three furlongs to go. Barr is still trailing the field. Coming to the top of the stretch. Bia Valentine is sprinting now. She heads for home with Andy Mame hard on her heels second. Yokama down toward the hedge. Maxine and Barr off the turn and into the stretch. It is Bia Valentine under a heavy drive. Andy Mame to the attack at the eighth pole. Yokama toward the rail. Barr kicking in late. And Maxime, final furlong. Andy Mame to the neck of Bia Valentine. Yokama in tight toward the fence. Yokama had to take up. Andy Mame the leader. 
anti-mame the winner be a valentine second and bar third well here she is anti-mame angel penna stakes winning double for angel penna jr as he wins the state bread coal and comes right back 25 minutes later with the one that was really sweet for him winning the flower bowl with auntie mame she had won the new york handicap won a division of the glens falls and was third in a very horrible trip in the diana you might recall here and of course that race only a mile and eighth might have been a little short for it too but now she gets a chance to stretch out around those nice sweeping turn with a mile and a quarter and gets the win. Johnny Velasquez in the irons aboard the nine to five shot. B.A. Valentine try to take him all the way around as to settle for second in a nice effort. Here's Bar. This is a three-year-old filly uh, coming in for Godolphin uh, uh, to try the waters here. And uh, she runs nicely, finishing in the third spot. The disappointment, of course, is Maxine and uh, Skiffing then said that maybe it's because she ran just two weeks ago at the Meadowlands in the Violet where she was second. Maybe he came back too soon with her. Well, uh, we'll see if anything else develops on Maxine, but uh, one of the worst efforts she's thrown in in a long, long time. Not Auntie Mame, though, a model of consistency. She gets her first grade one stake score in the time of 1.59. And one Sunday afternoon down in New York, two-year-old state breads in the Bertram F. Bond God. They're going seven-eighths of a mile. Fifty thou, the added purse again. Let's pick them up. Is Tom's call. 23 and one for the first quarter. David continues to spar with hearts at risk. Hearts at risk ahead. David on the outside. Those two now, and David pokes ahead in front. Hearts at risk, trying to stay with David. Two lengths back, you are all wet. Under a ride, now running in third. Cheval Blanc is fourth. Iron Pyrite has now dropped seven or eight lengths from the lead. Gander still trails. David, the leader, by a neck. A game, Hearts at Risk, continues to fight on second on the inside. And you are all wet, putting in his run now. And the field turns for home. David on top at the top of the stretch. You are all wet, coming to him. It's David, a half length. You are all wet, fully extended on the outside second. Hearts at Risk is third, farther back. Iron Pyrite fourth. And David is determined. David turns back the bold challenge of You're All Wet, and David will go on to win going away. You're All Wet, second by a huge margin. David, the winner emphatically. You're All Wet, second. David, Aaron Grider up for Mike Hushin and owner Barry Schwartz. Uh, this guy just broke his maiden last time out, a two-year-old son of Mount Livermore, so they put him in the barn guard. Why not? It's just almost the same is uh, not one of the other than, and he goes on to a nice three and a quarter length score. You're all wet at second, and hearts at risk will be your third state bread under the line. David, seven panels in a minute, 24 seconds flat. Noble Damsel on the turf, uh, the ninth and featured race Sunday, $75,000. The added purse for these fillies and mares and let's take a look at them tom's got the call they're in the gate and they're off oh nelly breaks on top gastronomical on the inside sopran meredith has secured a space at the rail as they make their way into the back stretch it's O'Nelly and Arrow lead, Sopran Meredith down inside, running second, Highland Strike is third, Rapid Selection, Gastronomical, Heaven's Command, and Irish Daisy as they continue their run up the back stretch. It's still O'Nelly in front, pushed along a bit by Sopran Meredith from the inside, the quarter in a snappy 22 and four. O'Nelly, the leader, a length and a half, Sopran Meredith second ahead, the gray Rapid Selection keeping pace third. Highland Strike working a bit harder to stay up close to the pace in fourth. Heaven's Command split horses to be fifth now. And toward the inside, it's Irish Daisy. Gastronomical has dropped back to trail the field. Rounding the far turn. O'Nelly a length, rapid selection is second. Sopran Meredith has lost some ground. 
now three and a half lengths from the lead. Heaven's Command called on for her run right alongside Sopran Meredith now. Farther back, Irish Daisy is fifth. Coming to the top of the stretch, O'Nelly kicking for home with a clear lead. Rapid selection, driving and under the whip second. Sopran Meredith on the inside of Heaven's Command. It's O'Nelly at the eighth pole, still fighting them off. O'Nelly by two. Rapid selection second on the inside. Heaven's Command coming on through. Not today for Sopran Meredith. And they're coming down to the finish. And it's Old Nelly. And she's full of run under the line. No, Nelly, Old Nelly impresses today, winning by four. Well, Todd Pletcher sends out Mike Tabor's Old Nelly off of just two weeks rest. Hey, Skiffington, you following along here? Old Nelly was in that race with Maxine. Uh, and Heaven's Command at the Meadowlands, the Violet, uh, where she was, uh, where was she? She was third in that race uh, behind Heaven's Command and Maxine. Now she comes back on two weeks rest and whoosh, here she is for a very nice four and a half length score in the Noble Danzel. They just couldn't catch her. Heaven's Command, a little reversal there from Chris Clement's bond, couldn't figure that one out. And then here's Irish Daisy getting the show money. Oh, Nelly goes the mile and one, 32 and four cent off at two to one for trainer Todd Pletcher. All right, uh, that's the North American action now. Let's turn our attention to Longchamp on Sunday afternoon. We've got three races we'll get in for you on the program this week. Take them as they were run at Longchamp on Sunday, and the first up, of course, is the most glamorous and prestigious race on the European racing circuit. That's the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe, a uh, mile and a half on the grass, 1.2 million uh, in guaranteed purse monies. Let's take a look at them. Remember, we told you at the top of the show about horses getting ready uh, for Breeders' Cup time. Well, certainly the Arc is no prep for a Breeders' Cup or any other race, for that matter. A classic that stands alone is Robin Wynn with the call. And away they go, a level break for the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. And there they go, and they're settling down now to race through the first furlong. And one of the first to go on is the German Tiger Hill. Fragrant mix on the far side, Legera between horses. Very close behind these comes on the outside, Happy Valentine coming to do his job. It's taken him his time. Happy Valentine then from Legera towards the far side. Posidonis in third, close behind these, Limpid on the outside. High rise mid division on the inside, followed by Curtius Sainter dropped out towards the rear with Caetano, looking back to find uh, Cash Asmussen, and there he is, second last on the outside. He's happy to be there. So Happy Valentine takes them along at this good, strong, easy gallop. Happy Valentine, the orange colors of Posidonis, and Jera third on the rails, close behind these Tiger Hill with the maroon and white of Limpid on the outside. Fragrant mix, the gray horse on the rail. Then comes Sea Wave. He's going nicely in mid division towards the outside, nothing in front of him. Close behind him is Saga Mix. On the outs inside of Saga Mix is Hill Rise, and after these Croco Rouge, the dark green, on the outside as they race down the hill now uh, towards uh, the halfway point of the after Triumph. They've done their uphill work and now they'll quicken up. Posidonis is there, followed by Limpid Legera on the inside, then close behind these Sea Wave. Uh, the pacemaker's dropped out pretty race. Still way in front. He's opened up a tremendous gap. I thought he dropped out. Happy Valentine's gone six, clear. Posidonis giving chase in second. Limpid's a length back in third. Legera four, Sea Wave five. Tiger Hill six, Sea Wave's going like a absolute tiger on the outside. Behind these, Saga Mix is tracking Sea Wave. He'll rise on the rails. Fragrant Mix on the inside, but Posidon is still tracking this pacemaker whose length's clear as they race down towards the last two and a half furlongs and Cash hasn't moved yet on Dreamwell. Zayinta's last of all. Caetano, the yellow and green, Gen uh, dropping out in altogether is Curtius, but it's still Happy Valentine with the advantage as they race down towards the turn in. He's out of shot, but he's still there. There he is. Happy Valentine. And now Darrow Donahue sets this one alight. He's going to hope he stays there. But coming then in second place, Legere has gone second. Limpid's under pressure. Posidonis under pressure towards the outside. Sea Wave under pressure. Saga Mix, the pink cap on the outside. But Legere strikes the front with a furlong and a half to go. And it's the Philly Legere. Can she win? Tiger Hill coming between horses. Over on the far side, Happy Valentine. Here's Saga Mix. Saga Mix coming with a late run as they race down now to the last 150 yards. It's Saga Mix towards the outside. 
outside Legera and Tiger Hill. Saga mix. Sagami, Oliver Pezlier in the Irons gets the victory by a neck. Third year in a row that Pezlier wins the arc. And how about this horse? This is a three-year-old Sagami by the stallion Linami, trained by Andre Farb. Four starts, four wins. A couple of allowance scores in uh, March and April and a stakes win in uh, mid-September, and now winning the ARC. And the good news is that Farb has said that they plan to come to Churchill Downs. All right, bring them on. Sagami, the ARC winner coming to the Breeders' Cup. Laguerra, a Saddler's Wells three-year-old filly, she's right there, boy. She just ran her eyeballs out to and finishes second, just couldn't hold off the winner in the final few jumps. And Tiger Hill gets the show money. Sagami, arc winner, look for him in Kentucky, winning the Arc de Triomphe Sunday in Paris. Running time over the soft going, 2.34 and 2. All right, we've got the Prix du Rhône, the next race that was run on uh, Paris at Longchamp on Sunday. Older horses on a flat mile on the turf, of course. $100,000, the guaranteed purse. Again, Robin has the call. Handler scrambles out, and away they go to another pretty level break. Ramuz got away as well as anything. Ramuz, Silich on the inside, and as Mike Cadamo predicted, Fly to the Stars has gone on from Satin Car in second, decorated here on the outside, followed by Gold away towards the inside. Silich tracks the leaders just behind Ramuz. But it's Fly to the Stars who's setting a really good, strong gallop here as they race away up towards the top of the hill on the far side, now downhill as they round this. Turn. Fly to the stars, sat in car length and a half back in second, decorated heroes, third removes on the rail, four. Gold away, five, just behind these, about six lengths off the pace. He's followed then by Silich, and last of all in the race is Maras, but it's still Fly to the Stars and Frankie de Tori setting a pretty good strong gallop. A length and a half in front of Decorated Hero, one of uh, Frankie's own rides behind him, one off the outside. On the inside, Satin Car, the horse with a white face, and then comes Gold away, nicely in touch and bowling along in the hands of Olivier Dollars. And after these removes, white with the red quarter cap on the rails, this one racing in fifth. And then after these, Silich and Maras, the field fairly closely grouped as they race now into the straight, just two and a half furlongs to go. Fly to the stars. And Frankie hasn't really asked him a serious question yet. Decorated hero, the red and white checks coming to challenge now. They've got a couple of furlongs or less to race. No, fly to the stars, decorated hero. Boga weighs under full pressure now. After these, sat in their car on the rails in four, Silich in five. But they come down now to the last furlong. They're 200 yards to race. Fly to the stars has made all the running, and that's where he He's going to be flying at the finishes, gold away, but he isn't going to get there. Fly to the stars as they come past the post. He's won it very, very easily indeed. In well, what would Arc Day without a Godolphin runner getting into the winner's circle? Indeed, here's Fly to the Stars, a son of Bluebird, trained by Saeed Ben Sarufa. Godolphin gets the three length score. Then Franco de Torre, Frankie de Torre in the irons aboard Flight of the Stars. Gold away, decorated hero, the second and third runners. Flight of the Stars sent off at five to two and wins the Prix du Rond Point the, on a Sunday in France. Running time over that soft going, 1.41 and one. And the final race from Paris at Longchamp that we have for you on the program this week, the Prix de l'Opera a mile and a furlong turf event, a group two uh, rated stake, $100,000 in guaranteed monies, fillies and mares going postward. And again, Robin with the call. And away they go. Miss Cast, the first to break towards the inside from Miss Carolina, running up on the inside as well. Inside just settled in the middle of the field there, within the yellow colours, Sir T. Last of all, at this early stage, is uh, Miss Berber. So they race through the first furlong, and no great pace on, and it's inside who goes on now. Inside from Miss Carolina on the inside. Bardonecchia follows towards the outside. Miss Cast is fourth, the light blue and yellow, the plain yellow colours of Sir T. And last of all, Miss Berber. 
they're there. So Cash Asmussen and Insight as they race now down the hill, round the turn at the far side, and they start the downhill run. Insight is the leader by a length and a half, tracked by Badenich here on the outside and Miss Carolina on the inner. Then comes Miss Cast, the pale blue sleeves, black cap, and Sir T in the yellow as they race down now towards the first false turn in. They're just past the halfway point in the Prix de l'Opera, and Insight is the leader. Out of touch now at this stage, but still a long way to go, is Miss Bear Bear, but Insight leads by very nearly two lengths. Badenich here disputes second with Miss Carolina towards the inside. Miss Cast, the blinker one on the outside, is a close fourth. After the Sir T is stuck in on the rails, and Miss Bear Bear's made up the deficit, and is now well in touch, although still last, as they race down out all to turn in, just over three furlongs to go from here. Cash Asmussen on Insight. He'll just let out a little inch or so of rain as they turn in now. Insight it is by a length and a half. Badenich is second. Miss Veronica, Miss uh, Carolina, I should say, is uh, being rushed along on the rail now. Miss Cast is trying to get on terms. Miss Burr is being ridden along at the rear of the field, but Cash hasn't moved much on this one, and I don't think he dare move. Badenich here putting down a serious challenge, and Cash is going to leave this to the last minute before he asks for a final effort inside on the rails, and Badenich here, the pair of them clear of Miss Cast. Miss Burr comes next, but it's inside very quickly, and Cash leaves it till the last possible moment. That was the right way to ride Badenich here. Well, his insight. John Hammond knew he had a good one. Just a matter of time before she wins a stake here. A daughter, a three-year-old daughter of Sadler's Wells. She's had uh, three seconds in a row and a couple of thirds before that. This is just her second win and her first win of 1998. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, they finally get that all-important black type on this daughter of Sadler's well, Cash Asmussen, very patient ride there. Didn't ask her for anything until they were inside uh, the furlong marker and gets a two-length victory. And again, a five-to-two choice uh, by the folks here betting through the simulcast facilities in North America. Bardanishia finishing in the second spot. Miscast gets the show money. Insight winning the Prix de l'Opera on Sunday in Paris. Running time over that very boggy course, 158 and 3. All right, that takes care of all of the replays for this week. Now we got to move into our notes department. What a weekend we got coming up. I'm sure all of you know, you've seen the promos, October 10th, the number 10. October 10th, 10 million, 10 in a row, the big horse, skip away looks to become the all-time leading money winner as he goes for his 10th consecutive win in this year's Jockey Club Gold Cup uh, down at Belmont Park. A uh, gentleman's going to give him another shot, give Mandela credit. They said, well, our, our guy ran his very excellent race uh, in the Woodward. Uh, we'll try him one more time uh, before we decide whether or not we're going to uh, go on to the Breeders' Cup or not. And also, uh, the European horse, Running Stag, who ran on for third money in the Woodward, is going to go in there as well. So the first three finishes, Skippy, Gentleman, Running Stag, all uh, set to go postward in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. And of course, that is Breeders' Cup, part of Breeders' Cup Preview Day uh, down in New York. The other races that we'll have for you, the Turf Classic Invitational, uh, we've got the Bell Dam, the Champagne, and the Frisette Stakes to round out a very fine uh, Saturday afternoon down in New York. Out in uh, Southern California, the Oak Tree meeting, the two-year-olds, the Colts and the Phillies, the North Fork Stakes for the gals, the Oak Leaf for the Colts. Uh, Bay Meadows has the Bay Meadows Derby. We'll take a look at the Hawthorne Gold Cup. Look for a touch gold to make an appearance in that one. Also have the Hawthorne Derby. We've got the cliffhanger over in East Rutherford for you at the Meadowlands. And we'll take a look at the action as Keeneland's fall meet gets underway with the Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup, the Nureyev, the Walmack Invitational. Stakes every day at the uh, short three-week Keeneland fall season. We've also got the final few races from Colonial Downs as well. A well, very entertaining week coming up, and these final Breeders' Cup race prep races uh, continue to just roll on out, don't they? Hope you enjoy them all and uh, making notes as to what horses are winning and getting uh, trips, not winning and having a little bit of a trip problem or maybe needing a race to hit their peak form 
for the first Saturday in November at Churchill Downs. All right, that puts the cap on things for this week. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, stay tuned right here to your OTV TV radio network station where you get the most complete coverage in thoroughbred racing. Till next week, Jack Wolf will see you here. So long, everybody. Enjoy the autumn weekend.